<laughs> Good one, Your Majesty. <laughs> uh, classic COVID safety. <laughs> Deception check, aka Weekend at Gerald's. This is maybe one of my favorite scripts, but it was also probably the hardest scripts to actually write. Not because it was difficult to find the humor in it, it was just because like every time I tried to condense the scene, I ended up adding like three or four more pages. I'm alive! Oh, he's alive? He's alive? No, he's not. He's dead. He's dead? He's dead? Yeah, uh, no. I, I mean, yes. I'm dead. <laughs> Weekend at Gerald's was the first big fantasy shoot day of the shoot block. We'd just done two tabletop days, back to back, tabletop for all of the episodes, but we're kind of used to that. This is the first time that the cast are seeing the extent of this new scope of production that we're doing. We've gone from 12 people max, including cast, and now we're suddenly at like 30. It was sort of, I think, confronting for them to see how professional we're operating now. They have to do this performance in front of a whole bunch of people they've never seen before in their lives. Luckily though, the whole point of this episode was for the party to be kind of bad at acting. So at least they might have been able to channel some of that awkwardness into their performance. And I think they did a really good job in the end. It's a sore throat! There's something going around! Yes, I caught it this morning! Cough, cough. Cough, cough. And this was our first time going to a location in the full new outfits, new makeup, everything. So it was really exciting and it was really stressful. I mean, this was all done before the day. Definitely not doing it on the day. Andreas and I were first cab off the rank. We were straight in there kicking the scene off and it was definitely kind of overwhelming to jump straight into it. But we were able to create this really good vibe with each other between takes and I think that really helped keep up the banter throughout that episode. We're in a tour in the scapula like cats. This is gonna be a behind the scenes super cut. Ava <laughs> and Tom do our music. There is nothing at all to be done about that. Coming into the first episode of season three was kind of like waking up in your bed, except your bed's in a different house and everyone's there. This is the first time that I've acted in front of so many people and a lot of these people are in the industry. So I did feel like an imposter. Ah, uh, oh shit, fuck. Um, no, no, it could be contained. No, uh, oh, shit. But then actually meeting a lot of them, learning who they are and like what they do and how long they've been doing it, it was, it was, it was really nice. It became just a big family by the end. Filming in Lindsay House had its challenges because we were still working within the New South Wales COVID guidelines. The property had restrictions on how many people could be placed in each room at any given time. When we rolled up, we'd close all the doors and go for a take and then cut and we'd open the doors and makeup would come in, props would come in and reset the art department and we'd have to relay notes and then reset and close everything. So it was a bit of a jarring routine at first, but I think as we got through it, we really started getting into a bit of a routine, so it ended up working out quite nicely. With Deception Check, I think it's our first Ivandra Hero episode since Murder Hobo. It was really interesting to kind of play on the idea that Ivandra's got charisma as her dump stat. She is not charismatic, she usually tries to solve problems with her fists. So it was fun playing Ivandra as a bad actor. No, it's it's not that serious. We don't. The amazing elf I play in this episode, he was called Reginald, and Reginald is the head advisor to King Gerald. He has a bit of an interest in the king, though, and likes to leave him to his fruity desserts, so to speak. It must be quite serious. Let me come in and examine you. Uh, it's not like he's gonna die of the plague or anything. <laughs> I've never seen a man more alive. Fuck, I should be down, shouldn't I? Gerald's corpse in this episode was played by Sam Wade, who you guys probably recognize as Anandale. Do you have a moment to talk about Zapskadov? 
master of the cosmos, keeper of the eldritch knowledge, our eternal lord and saviour. When I messaged him about playing a sticky corpse who gets puppeteered, um, he jumped at the chance. He was so excited to just be on set, be involved, and not really have to worry about any of his like bodily functions. I hadn't worked with Sam before, and he's an absolute delight. Just with riffing and committing to the roles, like the parts when I'm playing with his body, but there was a, a lot of small, like, sort of discussion and interaction while that was happening, which made it feel really organic and fun. Me do a hail hit. <laughs> hey, puppet man! <laughs> puppet me into some Nazi Still symbolism. Sorry. Get your petto cut. <laughs> Sam is dead this entire episode, and we needed to make it look like he had been very brutally punched in the face by Evandra. To start the day, we actually had to get ready off location because we were shooting in a heritage listed building and we couldn't shoot there as early as we needed to get everyone else done. So I did his makeup offset at my assistant's house. Reginald was done by Andre, who is very, very good at a very high elf look. Uh, it was the first time I had tape to make my features look sharper. The hair looked beautiful. I really struggled to keep it consistent though, as any time I moved my head at all, the aesthetic was ruined. Any sharp movements, any time I slouched, the whole, it just came apart and people had to remind me that this character cares about their appearance and is pretty and that's just not something I'm used to. The other issue was that we couldn't make a mess. And you may have noticed that Gerald is a little bit messy. We had mats down, we had tarps down, but it was okay, because messy is a lot easier to maintain than clean uh, in that kind of environment. So even though there was a lot of jam and it got really sticky, it was super uncomfortable for everyone who had to touch the jam. He looked really good by the end of it. He looked real gory. I had the wonderful role of smashing a jam tart into his face repeatedly and he informed me that he was picking jam out of his beard and his nose for several days after. I am a tart. No, I've got a tart. This is a tart. There was so much food in this one shot that just covered this beautiful table and we couldn't eat a bit of it. So the reason why we couldn't even touch this food was for continuity and it killed me because all I could do was just see this, these beautiful tarts and, and cheeses and everything and all I could think of was I want to eat them and I think you could probably see that in how Nixie is acting looking at the food. And then there was uh, the tarts that we are smooshing into King Gerald's face. So I think that might have been the only food that was somewhat consumed on that table. These tarts! Poisoned! <gasps> no, not the one, not that one! The one he was eating. Oh. You can take it out of the plastic bag. This is probably my favourite episode of the season. It's my style of comedy. The dice rolls, the looks Reginald gives, the bit with the beard being ripped off. And I would have gotten away with it too, if it weren't for you meddling adventurers! And this isn't even the king! It's the king's double. Oh, I knew he looked different from his picture! Actually, to be honest, I was thinking about that. The fact that it kind of looks like you. I forgot that just popped off the cock look. <laughs> There's a pretty smug look. Season three was gonna, at one point, be this continuous narrative where the party, they break out of jail, they meet Gerald, they go on this epic quest where they fight cultists along with their pacifist barbarian buddy, and eventually they return to the king and then they accidentally kill him. The last shot of the season would be Evandra sitting on the throne, and we'd be able to explore what that means in season four. I'd really love to see how Evandra then dealt with being in that position of power and diplomacy following on from the episode because I don't think she'd be the best king. But the closing shot where she sits down in the throne and is crowned and just takes a bite of that tart is just so epic and the way that it was filmed just makes it look really, really incredible. Oh, shit. Right. <laughs> it's so big and unnecessary.
necessary to love it. It's like a weird Gandalf oh. with the beard. <laughs> like a weird so ginger Gandalf. <laughs> And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling adventurers!